I consider to be a representative attribute of a human being, and one which we can be incredibly proud of as well, is our human body, our own bodies. And so that's what I want to talk to you about tonight, our own bodies. But not, I don't want to talk about them in any way. I want to talk about one very specific issue linked to them. A global issue, truly. But despite the reach of it, it is seldom, if not ever, addressed. As a matter of fact, out of all of you here tonight, I doubt any of you has heard of it. But I'm pretty positive that it concerns many, many of you. I know it concerns me. This issue is chorophobia. Chorophobia is the fear, the intense fear, of moving our own bodies, of dancing. And this is not a laughing matter, far from it. Of all the phobias one can have, be it planes, spiders, stage, the color red, whatever, I'd say the fear of dancing is probably one of the most irrational. Is there anything more natural, more intimate than our own bodies? And yet, we are afraid to use them, to move them, to feel them and to let them express. The fact is that our bodies are hybrids. They're intrinsically natural, but also profoundly and completely social. I'm not a dancer. I actually do have chorophobia. But I have the chance to work in an environment that supports dance and dancers. So I meet dancers every day. I see them work, I see them move, I observe, I talk to them, I ask questions, I feel the emotions they share. And all this got me thinking, why is it that most of us have such a paradoxical relation to our bodies? We pay so much attention to our physical appearance, and yet we have so little internal consciousness. So why is this? Is it something new? What are we missing out on? Am I afraid of dancing for other reasons than the fact that I never really considered myself to be the most graceful per person on earth? Why could I do it when I was five, but not anymore? As it turns out, the, the evolution of the perception of our body has been well documented by philosophers throughout history since the basic question actually underlying philosophy has been since ancient Greece, what does it mean to be human? So let's take a little journey down history lane. Throughout antiquity, and for most of the Middle Ages, the body has been considered ill-considered and therefore ill-perceived. It was, the domin dom dominant view was that it was enslaved to the soul. It was there only to obey the soul who controlled it with the mind and the will. To take Plato's words, the body was the soul's grave, no more. So it was really considered other, an adversary, an obstacle to moral, a resistance to knowledge, a place of distraction, where to lose oneself. It was also the sign of human passivity, representing what the fate of birth had given us. And so there has always been this opposition between the heaviness of the body versus the lightness, the agility of the mind, of the intellect. During the Renaissance period, a change started to, to occur due to artistic and humanist movements praising the beauty of antique nudes. But the real evolution happened during the modern ages, at which time understanding the human started to mean understanding the body, mechanically, anatomically. And this was linked to a completely new perception of the world, where body functions could no longer be explained with the soul. One of the major representatives of this period is Descartes, of whom I'm sure you all know the famous saying, je pense, donc je suis. I think, therefore I am. So the body is freed from the, the soul's grip, but not almighty either. The evolution of the perception of the body goes hand in hand with the evolution of our perception of the world and reveals deep historical movements and dynamics. All along history, the body has also been what frees, what sets loose. And so all this complexity linked to the body can, I believe, explain, at least to a certain extent, the complexity of our own relation to it. That being said, the reason I decided to talk to you about chorophobia tonight is 
actually largely due to our current discourse on the body. To put it blunt bluntly, it seems like our current philosophical views are starting to resemble the ones prevailing during the Middle Ages again. Emerging technologies are completely reshaping the way we apprehend our bodies, the way we use them. The promise of transhumanism is to be able to choose the body you want, the possibility of refusing fate. NBICs, so nanotechnologies, biotechnologies, information technologies and cognitive sciences are dissolving the frontiers of our body, of our humanity. The natural body as we know it is completely devalued, it's useless. So actually when we talk about the fourth industrial revolution, I think it's not only a technological revo revolution, it's actually also the revolution of the body. So in light of all this, I think it's that much more important to remind ourselves that our body is an ally, not an enemy, and to reconnect with it. And what better way to reconnect, to regain consciousness, than to dance? Movement is the body's first language. And so I'm not saying we ought to build a new hierarchy, body over mind, far from it. But dance actually allows to connect your thoughts to your movements, to reconcile body, mind, intellect, instinct, spirit. When you say you need to free your mind, don't you usually use your body to do it? Dance is a way to express yourself through yourself to communicate to others and the whole world around you. As Maya Angelou said, everything in the universe has a rhythm. Everything dances. And so the game basically is to be aware of those movements and to dance along. Your body is your own artistic instrument at your disposal to act and interact with your environment. And it's a pretty easy one to use as well once you let go. Dance is a universal language, cross-cultural. You need no translations, no explanations. You can just go ahead and communicate your feelings and trigger emotions with your energy. In my daily work, I try to open entrepreneurs up to the world of possibilities that art, creativity, and dance can represent for them. We're constantly under so much pressure. We can't just do, we need to create. We can't just learn, we need to innovate. We can't just follow, we need to lead. Entrepreneurs feel this pressure on a daily basis. And so what I'm trying to experiment with them is the impact that adding certain activities, clues, elements, which is seemingly not directly linked to the business plan in their work environment can have. And the impact is huge, and not only on invaluable abstract qualities, but also on very concrete skills, such as idea generation, for instance, which is crucial for innovation. Words can be misleading, but the body never can, which is also what makes it so terrifying, I guess. But I believe we should defend the cause of vulnerability. Vulnerability with a pinch of sensitivity equals a great deal of authenticity. Vicky Baum, an Austrian writer, said that there were shortcuts to happiness and that dance was one of them. If this is true, I think we should probably all try. Dance is not only an art, it's a posture. It's a special pair of goggles to use to look at yourself and at the world around you. It's a breath of air in your daily lives. So we're here tonight to try and find out what it means to be human. We probably each have our own definition. But for those of you who are still in a quest to try and find your own identity, I'll finish with famous dance critic Levinson's words. Show me how you dance, and I'll tell you who you are. So let's just stop being afraid and dance with your body and with your soul. Thank you. <laughs>